Hello and welcome to another review on three different Star Wars model kits from Bandai. Here we have three astromech droids. We've taken a look at previous astromech droid uh, model kits before, as well as some other Star Wars droids and other Star Wars model kits from Bandai before. So please feel free to take a look at those after you're done here. And it seems that uh, this is one great way for Bandai to keep using the same mold over and over again to produce more astromech droids. And I'm not complaining because these model kits are relatively cheap. And I like astromech droids from Star Wars, that's why I've been purchasing pretty much every single one of them. I, I still haven't gone back and purchased the R2 and R4 double pack, but I intend to. And I also have no desire to pick up the BB-8 and the O droid, whatever, the JJ Abrams voice droid, because I don't care about 7, 8 or 9 anymore, so classic trilogy stuff all the way. And by the way, Bandai has also just released a transparent quote-unquote hologram R2-D2. It is the standard R2-D2 model kit done all in a sort of navy blue-ish transparent plastic. So if that's something you like, you can go pick that up. I'm not interested in that, although you know, putting lights in there it might look kind of cool, but I prefer these more solid droids and stuff. So today we have R2-Q2, R4-M9 and R5-J2. All of these droids are actually seen in the original Star Wars movies in the background somewhere. So you just got to pay attention or Google and go on Wikipedia to see exactly where they come from. You know, I really do quite like the artwork that they put on these, but I don't need all these boxes, so I'm going to be putting them all in the recycle bin. However, the instruction manual does have this artwork, so that's, that's pretty cool to see. On side of the box, of course, you see where the droid comes from, and you know, what, what you get inside, how it looks, sort of, and also shows you here as well. Quick look at this one, this Imperial one, you can see exactly where it comes from. This is, uh, you can actually see this photo online, on Google, somewhere, and uh, because this droid is very hard to see and you know it's easier to find them in production photos and such. I think you also get destroyed in Fire of the Black series but of course it looks quite a bit different. And he does come with uh, extra accessories for the R2-D2 droid. Finally, quick look at this one. Again, very similar scene from the uh, other Rebel droid. And a quick look at here. Got the instruction manual inside and all of them have a brief description and again that photo there uh, you see on the box one side of the printing is in color and the other side is in black and white these are very easy to follow and once you build a few of these you very quickly know how to build this whole thing and uh, see look what parts you have inside uh, on the green one at the end because that's got some unique stuff in there again here's a quick look here all of these have a paint and sticker guide on the back and you know, so that's what accessory comes for R2D2. It's got these two electric arms there. And the rest of them don't because they ran out of R2D2 accessories. Now, this one's pretty interesting. Um, quick look at the color guide here. Now, because this one is. And because this one, the coloring on this is pretty different from the regular astromech droids, you actually get pretty much an extra set of body parts in here. You also get an extra set of dome for R2-D2. So that's pretty awesome. You have a lot of spare parts here. If you ruined or messed up any parts from the previous astromech droids, you have a lot of spare parts here that you can repaint and apply to those. And due to these different color variations, I have actually have pretty much this entire piece here left over from building the droid. And I was thinking like, oh, well, I kind of messed up this one when I was painting it more on that later. So maybe I can go back and replace some of the parts. Maybe I'm thinking about it, but you know, it's repainting something new and that takes time and stuff. So maybe not. Star Wars model kits also come with a rough sort of translation. You've got like English and Chinese on here to help you sort of understand the, I argue already very basic and easy to understand instruction manuals anyway. So this is really unnecessary. These are nice if this is the first ever model kit you've built from Bandai or any other manufacturer. Inside we also have a sticker sheet each. Uh, as you see here, I tried using that circle one, but that was far too awful. So in the end, I masked the whole thing and spray painted that. Little computer LED screens that they have on the droid, I did use these stickers. For the green one here, I didn't use any stickers. I was just like, forget it. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna look great. But for the black one, I used pretty much all of the big pieces of sticker sheets. I don't like these silver lines, they never stick well, forget about them, just get yourself a Gundam marker pen, silver one, and just draw off that. You might need to go with white first. The orange stickers here, didn't need to use white underneath that, so those, those were great, and I didn't use this black one because that's just very easy to paint. Over the droids here, we're just going to take a quick look at the stuff in front of them. So, uh, 
Yeah, in terms of spare parts, these are all parts that would have been used in a dome, which does not come with this droid. So you just get all of these extra bits and pieces here. So, and he doesn't really have any accessories. Now, all of his doors still feature the open panel. You can see these little pegs on the end of the doors here that does plug in. But in order to make up for it, I guess they come with this R2-D2 droid part thingy, which is nice and all, but uh, feels like a huge pain to swap it out into the droid's body so i'm not gonna bother this this is this is a pain i'm probably never gonna use it unless i key it in and photoshop or something in terms of this gray droid you have this bunch of spare pieces just because of the color differences you see this molded in the darker gray as the, the rest of the body but of course because that's different color so they actually have different pieces got all the extra doors and all of the extra accessories such as this the saw piece this little um handle thingy uh, some of these radio pieces, all of these welding tools, all of these are the same accessories that you would have gotten with the regular R2-D2 droid. Same goes with this white one, he also has a bunch of these, those doors, extra pieces there. Comes with an extra dome, so that's that's not the first time that's happened. The sort of, uh, the previous droid of this, that's in green, that I also reviewed, also comes with an extra dome and almost all the pieces you need to create the R2-D2 droid dome. Uh, really the only thing missing is this transparent glass piece there that's not there an under panel for this to cover it and let's see I think one of the things that plug in no that's it those are the only two pieces that are missing so you almost have an extra dome here and because of the different colors the greens and the light creamish colors you also have all of these extra pieces that I didn't use on top of these few pieces that are already lying there so that's in terms of spare parts that's kind of cool and Without making a new droid or using the past to paint a new droid, all the leftover accessories, you can probably put them together in a diorama for a junkyard, maybe. Maybe. Take a look at this black droid here. As you can see, all of these orange stickers here are well, appearing quite well on top of the black plastic, which is why I didn't want to use any paint this time, because first of all, these are square stickers. They'll probably look a lot better than me trying to draw straight lines. And second of all, if I was to paint this with orange paint, I probably had to do a few layers or a layer of white underneath, and that seemed like a lot of hassle. And these stickers do just fine. Aside from this sticker here, we're on the middle leg where I got a little pin and just scratched in the two groove lines, the rest of it uh, have done quite well. This sticker in the middle here and these stickers on top of the head, these were applied before the whole piece was put together so that some of the plastic, you know, the other plastic piece would go on top of the sticker and avoid it from peeling in the long run. A few more stickers that I did use is because this sort of black silver lining going all the way around because this plastic doesn't have any groove lines molded in, it's going to be really hard to paint it in and you know, I couldn't use a ruler or anything so um, you know, I figured this, this would probably be fine, it looks fine over them. It's clearly a sticker but I'm fine with it and these two silver lines are also stickers as well but all the other silver bits are all painted in and I did not spray this with anything on top. I probably should spray it with a flat spray, I might still do that but you know it looking kind of shiny right here is is good enough for me so overall this joint is pretty cool uh leg moves fine these legs also move fine and of course the head rotates just fine i, I like this joint boom now this one really frustrated me at the end more on that later uh so what i did was is aside from the computer panel stickers none of these used stickers they're all painted in and just yeah everything's painted not this black piece, that's just more plastic. So the door panel, you see I still messed up some of the straight lines. And um, this white area is masked and painted. The hardest of all was to mask and paint the dome area. That took quite a while. And yeah, so after I painted everything, um, I, I dropped him. I uh, After I painted everything and then I played the final spray of like acrylic protection, transparent protection over him, I dropped him on the floor where I've been spraying stuff and there's a lot of dust and powder I think on, on the uh, front here and I was just about to cry and chuck this in the bin <laughs> and just buy another one to redo it but I didn't do that, I ended up getting sandpaper and just sanding all the uh, hair and bits of dust that might have stuck onto it and then just respray it and um, it's been a while since I painted this, I've kind of forgotten where exactly I dropped it, so I can sort of ignore it. But uh, if I took my time and like looked at it again, I'd probably find where uh, the, the mess came from. So uh, obviously a lot of people can paint this a lot better than me, um, especially these straight lines, but otherwise I'm quite happy with how he looks right now. I like the colors, it's just this bit here, this is the hardest bit, the dome to uh, spray paint like this and if you do use the stickers it doesn't look good at all it just looks flimsy and out of place so what um, 
will suggest you do is get those thin white line that kind of feel like rubber bands to go around where you want to display the color and then after that you get regular sort of yellow masking tape and go around that and you should get your desired effect so yeah these straight lines were kind of okay to paint too finally this guy here now this guy was um and you see I uh, still messed up the spray paint a little bit now this one's a lot easier to spray most of all was just these lines were the harder bits and the body there because of these groove lines it was kind of hard to get the masking tape in so uh, I did really rub the masking tape on but I still messed up a little bit and so I just sort of got a bit of um, like paint remover to try and then like rub, rub it and fix it a little bit oh uh, it's it's okay I guess it still looks messy and obviously Pro painters would do a lot better job than me, but um, I'm quite happy with what it is and I quite like the look of this droid as is. So. so, if you're a big Asterix droid fan, these model kits are still great, still consistent, and the new colors are pretty good as well. Now, if you don't paint these, especially these two, you're not going to get the green stripe coming down, you're not going to get these black panels with the white, all that, all over the place. It's just going to be sort of a grayish. Um, R2-D2 with some like black doors and black panels it still would look unique and quite good compared to you know just another regular R2-D2 but you're gonna be missing out on the more unique print scheme and these and of course these model kits are also very cheap even if you get these and you don't care about the coloring and stuff you can paint them into anything you want um, we st I still don't have a red one which is should be quite obvious so I I'll probably pick up another one of these cheap in fact I have a spare one of these black ones because I, I bought another one by mistake I was like do I I have that I have too many astronaut drawers I kind of forgot I bought another one it was quite cheap anyway so I can definitely paint that painting black plastic back into white it's probably a dumb idea so uh, I'll probably paint this spare R2 into like a red one and then this extra black one I don't know uh, what what color would I would I do that maybe a full chrome one a silver one that that would be quite interesting so if you like astromech joys these are great model kits to have now if you don't have any painting skill whatsoever or the import fees are quite expensive there is the black series stuff they do have r2d2 in many different forms as well as the dirtied up one uh, they do have this one i think and and one or two other colors but the detailing on that is faded it's blurry and because they use the soft plastic it doesn't look as good I have no doubt if Black Series, like Hasbro, were to produce a new Astromech Joy for a new mold, it would look good because they have improved a lot from what I've seen from, especially stuff from the Mandalorian wave of figures. I actually bought a few more of those that I'm very happy with. Uh, no doubt that the Astromech Joy will look better, but no, it's still based on their earlier days. So if you want something that's clean and sharp, definitely consider pick up the Bandai model kits of these Astromech Joys any color all of them look great and as long as bandai keeps producing these i'll probably keep picking them up in different colors and stuff because they're fun to build fun to paint for me at least and the final result is some nice looking droids subscribe suggest and comment below and of course take care and have a nice day i will see you guys soon bye bye now